All right, we are in here for the next in our totally biased kit reviews of Science Olympiad models. This is the Freedom Flight kit. Uh, this is the most expensive uh, Science Olympiad right stuff kit on the market for good reason. It is the Cadillac of, of these kits. Um, love them or hate them, Freedom Flight are the kits that all others are judged by. Um, all other designs are judged by. People talk about, well, you know, I went to a contest with my own design and I beat the Freedom Flight kit. So whether or not you think this is the, the best one out there, um, the phraseology you use indicates that it is the industry standard. So we're going to pop this guy open. Um, I will say over the past few years, uh, I have, have heard some some complaints from various people that oh, the Freedom Flight kits are too complicated, too hard to build, and be that as it may, they win competitions, so maybe there's something to it. Um, when I open this box, I immediately am greeted by the fact that there are three sizes of rubber in here, and I have sampled my own kits and those of, of others, and that's... Um, this is the only one that includes more than one size of rubber. You've got big uh, propellers in here. These are, these are nice Icara propellers. These have a custom propeller shaft on them. I don't know if you can see this. Um, so these are no longer the uh, traditional um, assemblies. And you've got a box or a bag in here of all sorts of goodies, glue applicators, sanding block, O-rings, um, some nose weight, several sizes of tubing for, uh, well, no, the, okay, those are applicator tips, but the, the tubing for your adjustable, no, there are two sizes of tubing here, in here. Carbon fiber, a bunch of little different pieces of wood. Um, Got these blocks of wood which are carefully taped in place to keep them from flopping around. They're going to serve as gauges for something I can't remember what, but setting that aside. Uh, if I pop this open, I'm not going to dig too deep in here because this is a roll of covering film underneath. So you've got full size plans for this guy. Um, it talks about one millimeter carbon fiber rods for the wing spars, which is actually fairly beefy. Um, but there is all kinds of fancy detailed stuff in here. Lots of carbon in this airplane. Um, this is this is pretty state of the art. He does use a straight pin for the rear hook. Actually, that kind of surprises me a little, but uh, be that as it may, um, I understand the purpose of it. Um, so anyway, we'll set that aside. Very nice, frankly, a very nice set of plans. So if you're looking just to build a sport model, this would not be bad. Um, I'll set the covering material aside. We'll deal with it later. Um, you have, let me look at this, 27 pages of instructions here, which is uh, almost as much as the Guru Kit includes. And lots and lots of details on, on what to do. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, I'm not going to go into a super detailed build out of this airplane because, you know, it's, it's well documented. Um, but, I mean, this, this gets into thinning out glue to do everything. There's discussion of putting carbon fiber bracing on the fuselage, um, which I am going to take a look at these fuselages right now because that's something I'm curious about. And I can see some justification because this is very light wood. I don't think you really need the carbon on the fuselages. Um, just my opinion from having built out my own. There are... goodness. There are parts here for making a covering frame. Um, so the way this works, I'll go ahead and show you. You break these two pieces out of here, glue this together like so. Yeah, there we go. Like that. 
And now you've got these dowels that you'll grease with uh, petroleum jelly. Put your covering on that, um, and, and now you can do all sorts of fancy things. This is the way the, the covering frames used to be done until I started, uh, until I released the, the video that I did. And, and several people have decided they like my method better. Um, I think most people are still covering with the, the old method, uh, which is what this is. Um, and there is nothing wrong with that. So you've got a stack of carbon fiber in here uh, in two different sizes. So you've got the thin carbon for uh, trailing edges and tips and whatnot. These uh, thicker ones are for your, for your wing spars. Um, it's all good stuff. I can be real careful here. Uh, very nice high grade balsa sheet. One of the things that actually surprises me after having built the, um, the elastic launch glider kits is these are, um, this airplane has a lot less parts, surprisingly, um, and a lot less voodoo-ish parts. So the, the elastic launch gliders include a whole bunch of different types of carbon stripping and whatnot. Um, and this actually is, is fairly straightforward. So take that all for what it's worth. I'm going to come back at various points in this build and you can see where I am with it and, and, and whatnot. Um, but I, I think this kind of needs no introduction as far as how it's, how it's done and how cool it is and, and whatnot. It's going to be a nice airplane. Um, I will tell you from the outset, um, I have two complaints. Well, I have a couple of complaints with the design in terms of as, as a purist. Number one, the rudder is too small on, the, on this airplane. I've watched a lot of videos, and they, every single one of these I've seen fly has a tail wag to it. And you're losing some amount of performance from that, uh, which explains uh, a large part of why the, uh, the Finney plane by Bill Gowan is able to, to exceed the performance of this airplane. There's another thing, though. The Finney plane uses a drooped tail. Um, this airplane has the the wing and the stab at pretty close to the same elevation, and that's not a good idea. I understand the reasoning for it, and, and, let, and hear me out here. So if you have your airplane with a tail, uh, with your horizontal tail down here, and you fly over a roof beam, um, and I've got video of, of several of our planes doing this, not our Science Olympiad planes, but, but others in high ceilings, as you come across a roof beam, if, you, if the airplane makes contact with that beam, it will come over and it will hang on that tail. Very seldom will it get loose. If you have the tail on top, sometimes the airplane will slide loose. So the answer to that is a, is a tail design that I came up with for Hope with, uh, for her A6, and it worked amazingly. And that's a swept back tail um, that is, has a drooped tail boom, and the tail's mounted on top of that. And that will come free almost every time. So, enough of my strategy for, for all of that. Um, I'm going to start building this airplane. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I built out the flying surfaces for the Freedom Flight Models um, Fun Science Tandem, as they call it. Um, so here are your flying surfaces. Um, on the wings, you stick a little bit of overlap here so that you're... Um, plates after you've covered it so they can latch right onto the end. Pretty cool little way of doing it. Um, I should mention you use thin carbon on these uh, on these tip plates. Looks pretty good. Um, here's your your rudder. Sorry, upside down. There we go. Um, but uh, everything looks looks good. These do build out. Uh, frankly, I mean, if you feel this, you can tell it's a little bit heavier. Uh, in terms of the flying surfaces than a, a typical um, a typical one of these airplanes, I think at the end of the day, I think at least on the stab um, that the, the carbon is a little bit overkill um, as far as how, how stiff it is, how heavy it is. So that kind of tr has a trickle down effect through the rest of the design. That's why the motor stick has to use really super light wood. Um, so, where I do this, 
and obviously I'm not, um, I would be trying, if possible, to use the 019 by 039 carbon strips from CST for the wing spars. Um, you don't, uh, alternatively, you could stay with the same thing for the wing spars, because uh, the CST stuff, there, there are some supply chain issues sometimes. Um, so you could go stick with the same wing spars and then downsize the stab spars. Um, probably 020 carbon rod would work, um, even 030, because this is like 040 or something. It's pretty stout stuff. Um, and that just saves you some weight, and then you can use a little bit heavier wood on the motor stick and things smooth out a bit. Just my, my thoughts. Um, the wood quality is excellent. I did notice one thing, though, and this, I've not seen this before. Let's see if you can see this. If you look really closely, you might be able to see these lines are kind of wavy. Um, and it's even in the ribs here. So focus, focus, focus. Are you going to focus on it? There we go. Yeah, I, I don't know if that shows up, but it, there's this waviness in the lines. Um, and I've seen... I mean, some... Of, the, the bottom line is, I think... Uh, that Dave needs to do some maintenance on his laser because I I think that some stuff is loosened up. Um, I'll see him in a few weeks and I'm going to have to talk with him about that because I'm a little concerned that something's about to break and might break badly. Um, so, bottom line is, in terms of the impact on the build, not an issue. In terms of you looking at it and saying, well, I pay, I don't know what it was, $64 or whatever for this. Some people are going to be, eh, I didn't pay for wavy laser parts. Well, it's not going to affect the performance of the airplane. It's not even going to affect the build difficulty. The plane's going to build the same way. It's going to look great. Um, but there is something up there that's a little, and it sums up. Um, so... I'm sure somebody could find a lot of things to complain about about the senior flyer kits. But I'm not going to give them any help. Okay, so we have got uh, the stuff on the Freedom Flight kit here ready for covering. And I have cheated. I put the covering on my own frame. Because, well, I can and I will get an identical result. should mention this uh, is 2 micron uh, mylar, which is the same material we uh, recently were able to get in large quantity uh, to be using in our kits. A few of our kits have shipped with this. Uh, most of them have shipped with, um, I think it was 5 micron, yeah, 5 micron mylar. Uh, the original ones were shipping with quarter mil mylar, which is a lot heavier, um, and you can still build the senior flyers down to weight, even with that. Um, it's just the nature of the rules this year. So, get all of this down, and then you're just going to cut it out just like any other kit. Um, you can do the. You can cut it out with soldering iron, razor blade, scissors, whatever makes you feel good. It's all good. And so, there it is, all done. And we'll just cut it out per the, the norm. So you just run around here with a nice sharp razor blade. This stuff just cuts like butter until you mess up. If you have any excess, you can actually just curl it under. Because you've got 3M77 all over everything. Anyway, I'll come back when I'm done with that. Okay, so I uh, got everything covered here. And all that jazz looks really nice. Set all that aside. I'm working on the motor stick now. Now, Dave says, to glue about a two inch extension on here if you want absolute maximum performance, cool beans. What's really cool, um, I don't really care for the Icara propeller hangers, but they, they get the job done and they're pretty decent. 
So it's this little ring thing that they slot their bearing into, and then it has slots at the top. So Dave supplies you with these little pieces. You notice how that's glued off there at an angle? This slots in here, and I got some glue in it, and he says to clean it out, because you're going to get glue in it. The bottom line, though, is yeah, this thing slots in here. If I can do it right, there we go. It slots in here, and then you have built-in two degrees left thrust. Just right off. Check these set. Perfect. No further alignment. You just get it on there decently square, as I am doing by gluing it now in place. And you have two degrees left thrust. Pretty sweet idea. Um, might be doing something like that on our kits next season. Just saying. And the prop slots in there. I don't really care for how loose this prop fits, so uh, the, the bearing that is. So you want to glue that in place because that is going to wander in flight. Um, I don't remember seeing in the instructions, but you really do need to wrap this with thread to bind it in place. And again, as I have mentioned, I have not put the carbon on this guy. Um, we'll debate till the end of the age whether it's necessary. It's just my thought. Um, but my opinion is this is not an F1D, therefore it does not need um, quite that level of voodoo. And we're about to discuss another area of doesn't need that much voodoo in a minute. Uh, but first, we're going to make the propeller hooks, um, which are made from a straight pin. Um, and I actually, normally, I make fun of things that use straight pins for their rear hooks. Um, it's just me. I'm not a big fan. However, this one is done remarkably well. And so, you build a hook like this out of a straight pin. Now, there are little things that look like they should be gussets on your balsa sheet right here. The way those work is that you're going to come back here to the back of this motor stick and make sure I'm oriented. And you're going to glue this thing on like so with little little snapped off end here. That, that kind of stubby end is not accidental. It's to enable you to get a better fit on this. Now what you're actually supposed to do is put the hook in first, but I elected not to because I fly F1D so I can make my own rules. Right? She disagrees with me. I'm doing it anyway. I can't stop that. So anyway, we're going to lather this thing up with CA because I'm glue happy today because I'm in a hurry. We've got lots of things to do. Anyway, you get this. With minimal effort, i got to say, I kind of like it. Um, not a huge fan of straight pins for rear hooks, but that one came out well. That's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to build wing mounts and wing and stab mounts that are a little bit on the voodoo side, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I have finished the, the wing and tail mounts. It's the wing mount. It's a tail mount. So the wing mount has your incidents built in. Now, here's the thing. Dave supplies you with two types of tubing. The way this works is that you glue, is that you take this tubing and you glue it actually to the carbon rod. So you slide the carbon rod into it. Hang on, let me grab a piece. Slide the carbon rod in there. And because it's near it's very close fit, you have to take a pin and you have to poke a hole in this to get the glue to soak in. So now you've got your carbon rod with that on. Then, those are this that's over the carbon rod is intended to slot into this. Uh, this is Dubrow pushrod tubing, but this does not fit. So what you have to do, if 
try and do this without cutting my hand open, and this is why I'm bothered by it. You take a knife and you split this. Like that. Now, the tubing fits down inside and it gives you a friction fit. Now I have two objections to this. One is, in the time that it took me to glue the little tube, you to do that, on one of these is the amount of time it took me to cut the little tubing to size and glue a little thin film of balsa to the carbon rod, sand, scrape it down till there was almost nothing, coat it with a little bit of CA, whole thing's done. And I don't have mine bottoming out against a split in that tubing. Because that's the problem. The, that setup is going to bottom out. So if you try to raise it to reduce your incidence, now you've got the problem that the wing is, is too loose, can come, come out of there, and your plane crashes at the slightest bump on the ceiling. Not good. Now, there is another gotcha. And that gotcha is this. Going back onto the fuselage. So you've got your tail boom back here, and this is why I don't like the deal with the rudder out behind. This airplane uses one of those sliding mounts for the stab. Why that's a problem. If I go ahead and glue my rudder mount on here now, I can't get this mount on here. The reason I can't is I need to be able to slide orthodontic bands over the end of my tail boom. So order of operations, very important. Um, that's why I like just going with tip plates on the stab. Or, there would be another alternative. This is really light wood back here. So what you could do is make this half again longer, or double the length of it, and put the rudder right here. No other effect on the plane. Just saying. Um, that's my opinion on the matter. I actually don't think that level of adjustability is necessary on the stab in the first place. Um, but, you do you. Okay, so I've gone ahead and glued the wings to the wing mount and the stab to the stab mount. Now these are very fragile as is, you can't fly the plane like this. What you're going to do is you're going to take the thin carbon rod, this is a half millimeter carbon rod, and you're going to glue little braces like that. Now one thing you can do if you want to be really adjustable is on your wing, where the rod mounts down here, you could slide, glue some of that thin tubing over it, fatten up the end of the rod with some uh, some balsa, and now you have adjustable wing wash. Um, I am, in fact, am going to show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break off a short length of this, maybe. It says to use scissors, and I'm starting to understand why. Um, Normally, I grind uh, the end off of carbon to, to do this type of thing, but I'm not really doing it right now, because food sauce. Um, I actually have a very, very advanced wing mount design that I came up with uh, last time around that I, I never implemented. Um, it just felt like it was going to be... A little too difficult to uh, to work with. And now I have jammed that in there because it fits too tightly. There we go. So we'll squish it down just a little more. Oh, it fits about right. So flip the end of this off. And so I've got that arrangement. Um, like I said, it fits a little on the tight side, so it may not even be ultimately that usable, but it's, it's the thought that counts. Um, I do recommend these carbon-to-carbon -carbon joints. Lather them up pretty good with your CA glue because um, if you don't get them right, uh, they can be pretty weak. They are very, very brittle. So... This is one of those times when more glue actually does make the joints somewhat stronger as long as everything's close in there. 
That's probably not completely true. But I felt good saying it. So I'm gonna glue this so that I do have my starting point actually whittled about a touch of washout. Or wing wash. I don't know. Something like that. Alright, so there is your adjustable wing mount. Pretty cool. Just be very clear. Next year we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do we're gonna do fancy pants laser cut wing mounts, y'all. Um, I have seen the light on on wing mounts and will be making all of my wing mounts the same for the foreseeable future, except on the Hornies. Caleb wishes to come inspect. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so at this point what I'll do is I'll glue another one of these braces on the back. And this is just following the instructions to a T. There's nothing, nothing special happening here. No modifications. Unlike my other mods that I just was... Look, you know, you know when I'm doing a review, I, I mean, I try to follow the instructions. But there is a point in the complexity range where I'm just like, nope, I'm not doing that. It's kind of like uh, the, the part with the, uh, on the Guru engineering kits where they said to put carbon on the motor stick, and I'm like, that motor stick um, is strong enough to pick up my car. Not really, but it's, it's ridiculous. So, anyway, I'll come back once we get, the, uh, get these on the stab and install everything. Okay, so we've got all that done. I'm going to switch, slip the um, wing mount bands onto the motor stick here. So that's got the front done. We'll go ahead and we'll drop some. Maybe. So I've got a little bit of left rudder. Alright, so there's the completed airplane. Um, we'll stick a prop on it. And looks pretty cool, I gotta say. Cool doesn't win competitions, but um, this airplane definitely has, has won a lot of events across this country. So. Weight is 6.996, so way underweight. And now the prop's slipping off. Okay, that's it. I I know I said I wouldn't said to myself that I wouldn't, but I'm not dealing with this nonsense of this propeller keeping slipping off. Stay put, you. You will stay put. I demand of you that you stay put. Alright, now back to trying to make the airplane gain that additional gram of weight. That's not going to be nearly enough in order to put the rest of my clay. I has no ideas.
so 0 0.69. Eight point zero six one. That'll do. So I'm just going to glue it back here behind the wing. That'll do. All right. I'm going to make a rubber motor of the uh, thinnest stuff in there, and we'll see what it does for us. Okay. So I cut a loop of the 087 rubber, which is the thinner stuff that's in there. Um, maybe a little too thin, but I haven't played around with prop pitch. The plane is just barely above minimum weight. All that stuff. And that was wonderfully clumsy right there. There we go. Boeing of motor stick, however, this is also barely wound. I don't know if it's even enough power to fly. So, there we go. Apologies for kids doing this. And it dives out. Alright, so the airplane seems to have enough power. What it lacks is enough incidence to climb. So I'm going to slide the wing forward. And then I'm going to shove the wing edge of my staff down a bunch. side. It may just be me. Make sure everything is still set correctly. It is. It actually showed him that it had enough power to, to climb and this is not wound up very much. Oh yeah. Nice. I'll take out my penny pointing stuff. <laughs> All right, so anyway, this is the construction stuff of the uh, Freedom Flight uh, uh, tandem for uh, Wright Stuff 2020 or 2019. Um, we'll get it out there and we'll fly it a little bit and, and see how that goes. But I can tell you right now, I mean, it, it flies pretty, after I added some stab incidents in, and a lot of people forget to do this because I've seen, I'm, I monitor the forums over at. Um, Sialley.org or whatever it is, and and people don't do a great job of, of remembering to, to slide that down. Um, so the bottom line is, this seems. I mean, y'all have seen the contest results. These are competitive. Um, the big thing that I see is this and the senior flyer are the on, only two kits that are designed to actually fly on thicker yeah, rubber, and uh, and that's where you start getting some prop efficiency by having swinging those big big propeller blades. So anyway, that um, that should do it. That's it. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J and H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.